Hi, welcome back to Lipids in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we are going to talk about saturated fatty acids. We're going to look at their structures and we're going to look at how you name them, mostly with the common name right here and then also the abbreviation right here, which is sort of like 10 colon 0, 12 colon 0, and what that means, and so forth. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one of these fatty acids. I'm actually going to draw capric acid, and we'll talk about that. So whenever you draw them, it will have this carboxyl right here, and this carbon right here that I'm going to label as a pink, this is designated as carbon number one. Now in this, and I'll go into more detail on this later, for capric acid, the number before the colon right here to the left of it indicates the total number of carbons in the fatty acid. So what I'm going to do is starting with this one as number one, I'm going to say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I can even go and count them, that's the nice thing, and check to make sure I did get the right number. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. So sure enough, that has the right number of carbons in it. Capric acid has 10. Now, one thing is that we hopefully know by now that this functional moiety right here, this is called a carboxylic acid. Now, when you typically name a fatty acid, for example, this one with 10 carbons, we would call it capric acid. If we were talking about the one with 12 carbons, we would call it lauric acid. But we hopefully know that if there were a free fatty acid just floating around the cell, that this carboxyl group would be deprotonated. So there exists an equilibrium between the two forms of this fatty acid which favor the, the deprotonated state. So that's what I'm going to draw. So this has a minus charge now. Again, this is position number one, and I'm going to draw 10 carbons total. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, And then notice here that this functional group is the carboxylate form. Okay, Now, if you were being absolutely technical with this, this form of the fatty acid with 10 carbons, its name is capric acid. And then this ionization state over here in which the carboxyl is deprotonated, this is caprate. Okay, So hopefully you can see that technically, if you were naming this according to your rigorous organic rules, that if you have the protonated form of the carboxylate, or carboxylic acid, it's going to end in ic acid. If it's deprotonated, you're just going to end it in eight. Okay, so capric acid or caprate. If this was 12 carbons, it'd be either lauric acid or laurate. If it was 14 carbons, it would be myristic acid or myristate. And for the deprotonated states, we have, say, myristate, palmitate, stearate, arachidate, and so on and so forth. All right. And for the most part, if you had a free fatty acid, and this is actually what we would, we would dictate is a free fatty acid, we, we read it FFA, free fatty acid, then it's going to be in the deprotonated state for the most part. Okay? Now, if you read the literature, or if you're looking at some kind of um, problem on a test and so forth, a lot of times, even if it's in the deprotonated state, you still refer to it in the acid form. So even if I was to draw this right here, Sometimes when you read about it in literature, you might still hear it as capric acid, okay? If you were talking about 18 carbons, for instance, if it was deprotonated, they still might refer to it as stearic acid. It's just sort of one of those cases where biochemists are a little bit on the lazy side. And they just will call it lauric acid, myristic acid, palmitic acid, stearic acid, and so forth, okay? But any time you are looking at a fatty acid, technically when you're drawing it, the structure you would need to put it in the deprotonated state, but you can really name it either way. It's just if you read it in the literature, most often they will actually use the acid form, the protonated form, okay? So drawing fatty acids like this is actually, um, when they're saturated, is relatively easy. What you do is if, if you know you're drawing a free fatty acid, you generally just start by drawing the carboxyl moiety like this. That's your first step. And you're going to know this is carbon or position number one. 
And let's say I want to draw palmitic, which happens to be the most common free fatty acid, okay? Has 16 carbons. So I'm gonna draw on the 16 carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, okay? And you can go ahead and count this just to make sure that that's correct. Now, you see over here for palmitic, it has an abbreviation 16 colon zero. What exactly does that mean? Okay, one thing that we need to talk about for saturated fatty acids, and when we, when we do this, we're particularly looking at this region over here, this region of the molecule. Are there any double bonds in this region? And the answer is no. So when we're talking about a saturated fatty acid, so saturated fatty acid, there's one of two ways we can look at it. Either we can look at it is that every carbon, so all carbon atoms, are saturated with hydrogen, okay? But if you're, if you're really wanting to an easier way to look at it, what this means, number one, this essentially means the same thing as no double bonds, okay? All of these bonds are single bonds. There's no double bonds in a saturated fatty acid. Now, the obvious exception to that is the carboxyl, but that's a CO double bond. The point is, in a saturated fatty acid, there are no carbon-carbon double bonds. So it's pretty easy to draw them. You just have to know which fatty acid it is, and you have to know how many carbons are in it. Now, this abbreviation over here, how do they get that? Well, if I know right here, this was palmitic acid. This is palmitic acid. I know palmitic acid has 16 carbons. This is position number 16. So in that abbreviation, the first number is just the number of carbons. And in fact, whenever we deal with unsaturated fatty acids in the next video, this number, this first number to the left of the colon is also the total number of carbon atoms. The number on the right side of the colon, in this case, they're all zero, which should hint you that they're saturated fatty acids, the zero indicates the number of double bonds, okay? If this number zero were instead a one, we would know that fatty acid has one carbon-carbon double bond, and therefore it's not saturated, it's unsaturated. If this number was a two, we would know that fatty acid is an unsaturated fatty acid, and it has two carbon-carbon double bonds. Okay, we're gonna go into more detail on that in the next video. However, when you're dealing with saturated fatty acids, they're all gonna have a final number here of zero. The first number is the only one that changes, it just tells you the number of carbon atoms. Okay, so let me just draw one very quickly and let's figure out what how we would name it. And this one may or may not be a, a normal one that we find. All right, so one, I'm just gonna draw random ones, and you can have them in all sorts of weird conformations like this. And I, I'm just gonna count them and we're gonna figure out how we would name this according to the abbreviation form, all right? So this position right here is by definition carbon one, and let's count them. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then this is position number 26. So we look, are there any carbon-carbon double bonds? The answer is no. But we know there's 26 carbons, so the abbreviated form would be 26 colon, and there's no double bond, so it's gonna be zero. And in fact, that actually happens to be one up here. So this, this free fatty acid would be serotic acid. Okay, 26 colon zero. Sometimes, um, Instead of giving you the name, they could just give you the abbreviation, which actually makes it pretty easy to draw. If they give you the name, you, of course, have to know what the number of carbons is for that particular fatty acid, okay? And in another video, we'll go over an acronym for remembering those. The systematic names, which are more the organic IUPAC kind of names, decanoic, dodecanoic, tetradecanoic, and so forth, these names are usually not used. You'll usually never see these names. Um, it's just sometimes um, we like to be really, really specific with things, so we want to have those available. But these names right here are almost never used, okay? Now, one thing I want to mention is that notice that as the number of carbon atoms increases, the melting point of that fatty acid increases. So there's a general trend that we have, and this is really true for 
for any group of fatty acids that have the same number of double bonds. So this is a stipulation. For fatty acids with the same number of double bonds. So they either have to have all zero double bonds, in which case they're saturated. They have to have all one double bond, all two double bonds for this trend to really work accurately. But the trend is, is if I increase the number of carbons in the fatty acid, or I increase the length of the tail, then that corresponds to an increasing melting point, the temperature at which this fatty acid becomes liquid. So if we go back up here and look, we see that for capric through serotic, which are the most common saturated fatty acids, the melting point ranges from 31.6 degrees Celsius to 88.5 degrees Celsius. Now, this is just sort of a, a question to ask yourself. Where, when you're talking in the context of nutrition, where do they always say you find saturated fatty acids? What's high in saturated fat? Well, if you go to the store and go to the butcher, you might see a ribeye steak. A ribeye steak, certain cuts of that, you can actually see the fat on there before you cook it. When it's just sitting there in the, in the refrigerator that the butcher has, that you can actually see the fat on there. Now compare that to, say, vegetable oil, which is a liquid. What does the fat on a, on a steak look like? Is it solid or is it liquid? Well, it's solid, right? Saturated fatty acids tend to be solid at room temperature. So room temperature is in the 20s for at least, I forget exactly what it is, but it's somewhere 20-something degrees Celsius. The, the lowest melting point for this group of fatty acids is 31.6. So what does that mean? It means that the temperature that we exist in, if we're at room temperature, is lower than the melting point of all of these. So these fatty acids have not hit the temperature at which they melt, so they're all solids. So in general, if you have some kind of a fatty tissue of any anything, usually we're talking about animals, any kind of fatty tissue, if there's a lot of saturated fats in it, it's going to tend to be a solid. Okay, So the more, the more saturated fats you have, the more solid something is. As we're going to find, if we start increasing the number of double bonds, we're going to actually decrease the melting point. So I'll put this trend here also. If we increase the number of double bonds, then that's going to tend to decrease the melting point, which is just going to mean that's going to increase the tendency of these fatty acids to be in the liquid state. All right. And so that is basically how we end up naming fatty acids. Okay. In the next video, we're going to go over a trend with how to remember, or not a trend, an, um, an acronym for how to memorize, you know, Caprix 10, Lorex 12, and so forth. And then after that, we're going to go into unsaturated fatty acids. All right. So I hope this video helped and gave you a little bit of intuition on the basics of drawing and, and looking at properties of saturated fatty acids. Join us in the next video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. Thank you.